Hi everybody and welcome. Today we're going to be going over a problem similar to one you may find on your final exam for your Introduction to Biostats class 1690. We're going to discuss which test to use to answer the question, how to compute in STATA, and how to interpret the results we get from STATA. The problem we're going to be working on is looking at esterol and pregnancy. Esterol is a hormone that's produced during pregnancy. The level of esterol in the mother's blood gives us information about the health of the developing fetus. Low levels of esterol may indicate that the baby has Down syndrome. Esterol is measured in milligrams produced in a 24-hour period by a pregnant woman. Today we're going to be using the green touch hole data set to solve each of our questions. So let's get started, shall we? Question 1 asks, is there any association between birth weight and esterol levels? So anytime we're determining whether or not there's an association between two variables, we take the distributions of the variables and lay them on top of each other. In this way, we can compare whether or not they, o they overlap and by how much, and this is going to give us information about the relationship between the two variables. Before we can compare the distributions, however, we have to check to see if the variables are normally distributed. Remember the normal bell curve? Well, we'll do that by conducting three different tests. The first test is a histogram, so let's make a histogram in STATA to see if the distribution is normal, and we'll use the STATA command hist esterol. So we're going to be starting with the esterol variable. Although this doesn't look exactly like the bell curve, it's close enough. It doesn't have big pieces on either end and nothing in the middle or everything over to one side those are examples of non-normal distributions it has a, it goes up in the middle so we can say that it is um, normally distributed so next we're going to plot out the points um, of our data set to see if they follow a pattern we'll create a scatter plot by using the stata command q norm esterol each dot represents a data point, and they all seem to be headed in the same direction. If you drew a line down the middle of them, you would see that they form a clear pattern. One last check to ensure this variable is normal. We'll be using your favorite and mine, the shapiro will w test for normal data. To do this, we're going to use the stated command SWILK esterol. Aha! That gives us a chart. The number we care about for this test is the p-value, and you can find the p-value right here. Now because the p-value is larger than 0.05, we can say that the variable is normally distributed. Great! We've confirmed that the esterol variable is normal by conducting our three tests. But what about the birth weight data? We need to run the same three tests to determine whether it is normal also before we compare the two. Ready? Here we go! We'll do a histogram test. In STATA, it looks like this. Hist birth weight. Okay, it looks pretty good. Nothing too outlandish or abnormal. Next, we plot the data points to see if they make a pattern. Um, so the STATA command for a scatter plot is Q norm birth weight. Ooh, it looks very good. They're all clearly in a pattern that you can draw a line through. Finally, we're going to do everyone's favorite test for normality, the Shapiro Wilk W test for normal data. Awesome, here's our chart. And the p value is definitely greater than 0.05, so we know that, they're, uh, that we're good to go, that the birth weight variable is definitely normal. Fantastic, now we've got a couple of normal variables. What do we do with them? Remember the question was asking us if there's any association between the variables. An association would mean that if you knew one of the variables, say esterol levels, then you could predict the other number, like the, the birth weight of the fetus. So let's find out if they're associated. We'll take the data from the pregnant women uh, about their esterol levels and we'll compare the data from our same women um, about the birth weights of their babies and see how they compare. First, let's make a scatter plot to see how the data distributed um, when they're both together. So, scatter esterol birth weight. Hmm, okay. Well, they look a bit messy, but there's a general direction they seem to be moving in. If you drew a line down the middle, you can see a bit of a pattern. Um, so, let's get some actual numbers on this. So, because both of the variables are normal, we can run a Pearson test. And we want to look at each woman individually. So our STATA command would be PW core BWT 100 esterol, and we want a single observance. Okay, here's the chart that Mr. Pearson gave to us when we ran the test. 
the numbers right here are what we're interested in. The top number is the correlation coefficient. Remember that a correlation coefficient of 1 would be the most correlated possible. So this number is 0 0.61, and so that means it's definitely correlated because it, you know, it's approaching um, 1. The bottom number is our p-value, and that is less than 0 0.05, which means that the variables are significantly correlated. If you change a woman's estrol level, the birth weight of her child would definitely change. We have our answer. It's in three parts. Um, the first part, correlation coefficient of birth weight and estrol levels is 0 0.61. Next, we want to say that the p-value of the Pearson correlation coefficient is significant at 0 0.0003. It's very significant. Then lastly, we want to say definitely there is a linear association between birth weight and estrol levels in this population of pregnant women. So we know there's a relationship. Okay, question two is asking us to fit a regression line relating the birth weight to the estriol levels. The regression line is going to tell us to what extent the variables are associated. So what do we need to do to fit a regression line? We need to assume three things about the data before we can see the degree of the association. Independence, linearity, and homocidasticity. It's a large word. We'll check for independence and linearity first, and then we'll run a regression model before we look at homocidasticity. Thing one we need to assume is the, the independence of the variables. To check for the independence, we use the state of command tab ID. And here's what we get. Isn't that lovely? So nice and neat. In this column here, all the frequencies are 1. We see that there's only one observation per person, so the data meets the assumption for independence. If there had been more observations per person, then the data would have been paired or matched data, but that's definitely not the case here. Okay, so one assumption down, two to go. Let's check for linearity. Here's what we put into Stata. Okay, and what we get in return is this nice scatter plot with a line in the middle. Because the data points are all more or less forming a pattern around the line, we can say that the degree of association is linear. All right, are you ready? We're going to fit the regression line, which is going to tell us just how the two variables, esterol and birth weight, are related to each other mathematically. The Stata command to run a regression line is, drum roll please, regress BWT100 esterol. And here's our output from Stata. To interpret the regression line, we want to fill in the blanks for the equation y equals ax plus b. We need our a and our b. a is the coefficient of estrol, 60.82, and, and b is the constant, 2152.34. So the equation we've come up with to analyze how the variables are related to each other is y equals 60.82 times estrol plus 21.52. Keep this in mind for later. All right, our last assumption. We're going to assume that the data has homostadastasy. If our data was homostadastic, then we would, then there would be little difference between the outcomes that our equation comes up with and the actual data from the actual women. So we'll run two stata commands to test for homostadasticity. All right, awesome. Here's our scatter plot. Hmm, okay, this does not look very centered around zero, nor does it look symmetrical. If the data was homocidastic, then it would be symmetrical around, if you drew a line at zero, it would be symmetrical around that line, um, and um, it's definitely not. Okay, so for everyone's favorite test, the Shapiro-Wilk W test for normal data has given us this beautiful chart. Our p-value here is greater than 0 0.05, which means that the data is normally distributed. So hooray for that! Our answer is that the residuals look normally distributed, but we're also probably, we don't have homocidasticity. So the regression line doesn't fit too well in certain ranges of esterol level. All right, what do we know so far? We know that the variable esterol and the variable birth weight are normally distributed, and that there is a linear association between them. And now we know that the association is normally distributed, but is not homocidastic, which means that there are certain ranges of esterol levels in the blood that don't clearly predict the birth weight of the baby. Okay, question three asks us to test for the statistical significance of the regression line using the F-test. 
Okay, this is pretty straightforward. We want to know whether the relationship between the two variables is significant. We need an F distribution and a P value. We run the F test by using the command regress birth weight esterol, and this beautiful chart is our output. For this question, we need to find the F test value and the P value. The F test value is found here and is 17.16. Now, when we look this up with the distribution chart in our textbook, uh, which is on page 836 and 837 in Rosner, then we come up with 4.17. Our p-value is 0 0.0003, which is clearly less than 0 0.05, so we know that it is significant. Our answer is that there's a significant linear association between birth weight and esterol. Question 4 asks, what is the coefficient of determination, or the r-squared, for the regression line? If the coefficient of determination is asking uh, the, the coefficient of determination is asking what percentage of the variability of birth weight can be explained by the esterol levels. We don't need to run any additional tests in Stata because our F test actually gives us the R squared and it's right here. So our answer is that the coefficient of determination, the R squared, for this regression line is 0 0.3718. And that means that there's a 37% 37% of the variability of birth weights is explained by esterol levels. Ta-da! That was easy. Now on to question 5. What is the predicted birth weight of a baby for a woman who has an esterol level of 24 milligrams? Remember our equation from before, y equals 60.82 times esterol plus 21.52? Okay, well now we have esterol level to plug in. And if we want for Stata to do the math for us, we type in DI 21.53 plus 0 .608 times 24, and we get this answer of 36.112. And our answer, is uh, our answer is that the predicted birth weight of the baby for a woman who has an estrol level of 24 milligrams in 24 hours is um, 3,612 grams. Okay, question six asks us whether we identify any outliers. Okay, well to do that we need to visualize it. So let's make a, um, a box plot. So um, we'll make a box plot in Stata by using GraphBox standard uh, um, SID. So nope, it doesn't look like there are any outliers when we make the box plot. If there were any, they would show up outside the, the little boundaries right here and they'd show up as dots. So no dots no outliers. Our answer is that the box plot of the residuals does not show any outliers. Question 7 asks, what are the prediction intervals for birth weight? Now, we're going to be making, uh, we're going to be plotting out all of the values of our data set using the formula that we've come up with. We'll fit a regression line down the middle, and next we'll figure out the confidence interval for each birth weight value, how much standard error there is, and draw a line for the upper confidence interval and the lower confidence interval. In Stata, there is not a command to generate this automatically, but Stata provides the standard error for the prediction. So then we'll compute the lower and upper values of the prediction interval um, for, it, for each individual value, and we're going to plot these. So here's everything we're going to type into Stata. Now we have a nice dot sandwich. If the interval was very wide, it would mean that when we put in the birth weight, our formula does not accurately predict the esterol level. But since it's fairly narrow, we can say that our formula accurately predicts esterol level. So this graph itself is going to be the answer to question 7. All right, question 8 asks, what is the prediction interval for the average of the birth weights? Well, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to be making a, a scatter plot and plot out all the values of our data set using the formula we've come up with. We'll fit a regression line down the middle, and next we'll figure out the confidence interval for each esterol value, so how much standard error there is, and draw a line for the upper confidence intervals and the lower confidence intervals. We'll put in the following stata commands, and we'll get this output. Look how narrow that interval is. It means that for our formula, we, ac we can accurately predict estrol levels when you put in birth weights. So our answer to this question is just the graph that we've made. Um, and that's all, folks. I hope you would enjoyed this review from uh, the final exam for Introduction to Biostats. Thanks for watching, and good luck on the exam.